here comes the nasty girl. Welcome back to the Nasty Girl RPG Podcast for another installment of Choose Your Own Adventures. This is a walk on the wild side, part one. Well, hello and welcome to another, all together now, Choose Your Own Adventure. Choose Your Own Hard Cheese. Choose mm-hmm. Your Own Hard Cheese. Soft this cheese. is Josh. I'm going to be the Dungeon Master for the first time on our little Choose Your Own Avenger series. And around the table with me, I am joined by four fine players. Jake, why don't you start us off? Hey, this is Jake, and I will be playing Shazim. He is Shazim, not Shazam. (laughs) He is a warlock of the mythos. Human. Uh, Hi, this is Ryan. I'll be playing Hilgis Hirlikit. He is a warden, I think. That's a thing, right? Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Um, he is a paladin, and he enjoys cured meats, hard cheeses, and um, yeah, that's, I think that's about it. Yeah. And being successful and, on missions. And yeah. Strong leader role. <laughs> He's got two wins under yes, his belt, the, uh, both with asterisks. <laughs> Undefeated. <laughs> Defeated. Mm-hmm. Hey, everyone. Uh, this is Dan, and I am playing for Chorus Sorak, otherwise known as Frank. He is a human fighter. And he's part of the Warden um, Tradicium School. What's good? I am Matt. I'm going to be playing Al Isan. Uh, he is a Circle of the Stars Druid for the Arcanum branch of the Tradicium. Slash <laughs> stand in for Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Groovy. Whoa. Well, whoa. That's whoa. insulting. <laughs> Another uh, peek behind the curtain we like to do here. A uh, little pregame chat. We let people roll hit points. And um, <laughs> mm. we had some tough rolls, tough rolls, and the players begging for help. And um, the benevolent GM. Being, <laughs> being. The other benevolent GM, <laughs> who may have been talking about the great opportunity to kill players without consequence in a long term <laughs> campaign, offered uh, all the players a chance to re roll their poor hit point rolls um, in return for a DM re roll of my choosing. And three players took me up on it. And uh, didn't go great, but <laughs> it was, I got uh, three rolls. Yeah, we we <laughs> traded off. I think a a combined four hit points for three re rolls for you. So mm. yeah, Strong. I think it was a net yeah. gain of four hit points. Four hit points. Yeah, yeah. among the three of us. Yeah, among glad, the three players, glad I get to suffer yeah. for your bad yeah. decisions. <laughs> yes, Matt held, <laughs> held steady. That's that's what being in a party with Hilgis is all about. Is <laughs> suffering for his bad decisions. All right, so you yeah. um, we are back at the Tradicium. And uh, you have been summoned to uh, where the fuck are the things that there there was a Dan you you let off this whole campaign yeah it's like the towers mm, what sure. are they called they're just called the towers Dan, towers. Dan run this part of the game run spires. this game <laughs> uh, th- there are four individual spires at the uh, Tradicium. And there is one place, uh, the library, where there are kind of collective meeting rooms where people kind of study. And often meet to go over information that's going on in the realm or to talk about different missions uh, that the coteries are going out on. Cool. All right. You guys have been summoned to the southeastern tower of the Tradicium. And uh, you are let in from wherever you were, whatever you were doing. Some of you, I think actually all, all your characters, how many missions have you guys been on? Jake, you one. One. Ryan? Uh, just those two. Two? Yeah. Uno mas. Uno and One. for Matt? Okay. So, um, you've got some time in the Treaty Seam. All of you are, you know, not green, but certainly not the most seasoned. Um, but you are brought up to one of the higher levels of the Southeastern Tower, and you're brought in, and this room, it's circular, and the entire room is filled with maps all the walls the ceilings there are multiple tables there's kind of um, almost picture a circle inside the room of tables where there are four kind of each a quarter circle there are just maps everywhere there are maps that are painted maps that are laid out on the tables and this is the area that is most commonly 
used by the Sinishers, who are the sort of experts in travel and movement and getting basically responsible for getting the coteries of the Tradesium where they need to go. Um, you are brought in and there's only one man um, that is inside the room. Uh, some of you may have seen him before. He is called Nefundi. He is a very, very dark skinned, almost black skinned human from the Southern uh, lands of Kasim. And uh, most of you are at least aware of him by reputation. He is the second highest uh, rank of the Sanishers. He's standing in between two of these um, tables, and actually behind him, there is a um, magically illuminated uh, map that is floating in the air, and you see him kind of glancing back and forth. And he turns as as the four of you fully enter, and he says, Hello. Welcome. Thank you for answering the call. Yeah, no problem. It's not like we get much of a choice here. <laughs> Frank nods as he walks in, but doesn't say much. We have a mission for you. One of importance because it involves the well-being and perhaps the very life of a coterie which has been lost. One ten day ago, a coterie, small led by a hunter, Elind, was sent a good distance to the east. How many of you here are familiar of the city of Zadina, the kingdom of Nestia? All of you? A bit, yeah. Yeah, can it? I have not been able to visit Zadina, but I've heard of its beauty, and I hope to see it. Well, today will not be that day, but you do go in that direction. This coterie was sent. There were reports. We have a small office in Zadina. It is an important city of transit. To the southeast of this city, we have strange reports have come in. Sightings. Things that do not make sense in this place. Creatures. Experiences. Elind was sent along with Two others in his coterie, a Sinusher, Khalif, an Inquisitor, Besmar. They were sent to learn more of what happened. There is a, another local situation which made this a more pressing need. An important noble family, a young lord. He set out with his fairly untested skills in the arcane. To find out more, this group disappeared. For this and for the other sightings, we sent the coterie. They traveled through the guideways to Zadina. We got a report back, and they were headed southeast, a town called First Watch. This is the last communication we have had with them. Their locals, this noble family, there were search parties sent. There were no signs found of either party, of the Lord or of our coterie. But the search parties, uh, they returned. The search party returned with no reports of anything else amiss. Our office there... Everybody give me an insight roll if you uh if you could. In insight. Ooh, oh yeah, there we go. Buddy, that's at 23. Ooh. 19. 4. A big old <laughs> 11. That's 11? a 7 for me. Okay. Uh Matt, Al, um y- you have met Nafundi before and he is very measured. He's a Large and powerful man, both, you know, figuratively and literally in the Tradesium, um, has a very important, prominent role. He is nervous. You can tell that you get the impression that this might be, he might be concerned about the actions he's already taken in this area, that perhaps he feels responsible for 
for the loss of of this coterie. He just he seems very concerned and a little bit on edge. And uh, he continues and he says, a local representative. He is not a complete novice to the arcane. He reports there is disturbances in the weave. The magic which binds all of us. And yet there is nothing that anyone has reported to be found. That is why you are chosen. Ah. He looks up at the door and another man enters. A small man. A halfling. Um, some of you might recognize him. He's a he's a son of sure. His name is Hendel. He's a halfling. Um, probably middle-aged. Rather uh, brusque and businesslike. He's a probably middle-ranked sinusure. And uh, busy. He is frequently on the road. Hendel has uh, been briefed on the details already. The collection of you are chosen for a reason. Two wardens, a mythos, an arcanum. This is not random. Not as if the DM just let the players (laughs) pick their characters. You are here because you are the right collection to go. Your mission is to go to this region and discover what happened to our coterie and what is disturbing this place and to do so safely and conservatively. The Tradisium cannot afford more losses. You are to understand and explore and to pass back word of what resources are needed, if any, to bring back our coterie and to unravel this mystery. How long would you like us to investigate? As long as is needed. If you have nothing within a 10-day, I expect a request for more resources, whatever it is that is needed. The guideways that they traveled and that are in the area are known by Hendel. This uh, princeling it has gone and got himself lost. What kind of uh, arcane arts did he practice then? Did he learn them here at the Tradisium? He did not. His family is wealthy. Had him educated in Vragos. He is a warrior. They were practical arts for the most part. Arts of being able to attack with strength, movement. He set himself out to be a knight and a hunter for his lands. This is why they sought to clear this area. What does he go by? His name then? Now, funny pauses and uh, Matt, I'll, I'll keys back in on this nervousness. He is of the house of Casimir. Um, anyone with <laughs> history. I was going to say, do we even need to roll that? <laughs> or awareness or really basically anybody that has <laughs> had experience knows that that is the royal house of Nestia. Yeah. Um, and Matt, you, uh, Al kind of sort of keys into, you think that Nefundi is feeling the responsibility of not just the coterie, but the loss of a nobleman of the most important Royal family, maybe in the world, but definitely in this part of Regnum. Uh, You see, Frank, he kind of was looking down at the ground, asking these questions with his kind of hand on the pommel of his sword, just kind of relaxed. He looks up, his eyes flick up now when he hears that name. And he says, does the rest of Nestia know that their prince has gone and got himself lost? I cannot speak for the kingdom. And the kingdom does not necessarily speak for the actions of, of this young lord. Hmm. This young prince is, uh, he in line to become king. I find that it is best at this time to withhold anything that could be damaging for the kingdom. Let it just be known 
that this is of grave importance to the tradicium and to, to the stability of Nestia. Shazim nods. Frank's kind of nodding in unison with him. And time is also of importance. If resources are needed, I expect that they are requested in a timely manner. Do you have a fondue pot of (laughs) elementals? Handel, can you explain and distribute the items? Handel steps forward. He kind of just been leaning against one of these back tables and he steps forward and he says, Yes, um, you've all traveled Shanisters before. You're not completely green. Well, he, he starts walking around. He hands out these coins on a necklace and they're a large kind of medallion, uh, about inch, inch and a half, uh, almost two inches in diameter. And they have emblazoned on them uh, a compass rose. And he says, um, you probably have been past these before these have a couple additional enchantments and they will be able to communicate directly through the guideways back to the tradicium not just to me that's a neat trick it is um this is something the top signishers have been working on and should work without a hitch are you giving us these because you fear we may also be lost? I am giving you these because it is important that we do not send people out to be lost. You are on a mission of rescue and discovery. And if there are threats out there, we need every member to be strong, to be capable and to be able to call for help as needed. Or food if needed. Mm-hmm. On our first mission, we, we ran out of food. Right, Al? Yeah, that's right. These, these would have been very helpful. Very well. Handel, can these gems be used for us to talk to each other? Handel says, um, yes. I mean, if, if, if we were separated, um, that is possible. I can teach you some simple... Um, Simple command words that would enable everyone holding these particular five coins, myself and the four of you, to be able to password back and forth. It will also reach Nefundi here. It is essentially instantaneous, although over great distances there will be a slight delay. Hmm. Interesting. It's got to go up to the satellites and get back down. (laughs) (laughs) I should like to know more about that, but now is not the time. It, um, it, I mean, it really uses the same same magics that we've used to map and develop the guideways. It just uses it um, in a more um, hasty fashion. Perhaps you could tell me more while we travel. Yes. The fundy says, this is a matter of importance to Tradesium. I have alerted a pharaoh in the quartermaster's department that you are to be given priority for anything you find you may need. I will also add that this matter is not to be discussed outside of this room. The Tradesium is a large organization and also hosts many visitors. We find this matter to be of especial importance and we do not want to upset the balance of anything else. Is that understood? Aye, it's understood. Shazim nods and uh, says... I have one last question for you. You mentioned beasts in the area. Are these beasts that are dangerous? That is the suspicion. That is why the young lord traveled to that area. There were Mm. disappearances, but not, not as many as would be expected based on these reports. Some of them, we feel there is rumor and townsfolk that are playing into word that has passed. My personal suspicion is that there is a small thing at play, and the word has made it seem larger. We must nip this in the bud before it grows to destabilize a larger situation. Very well. 
despite how small you think it might be, it's already taken a coterie and a prince. Perhaps. Again, I must stress, we do not send out people from the Tradesium in missions to be lost. Every member of the Tradesium is important. You are there to gather information, protect each other, and bring back those we've lost. Very well, then. We leave now. Equip yourselves well for anything that you might face. We will. The hard boys will not let you down. We're the best. <clears throat> oh, welcome to the hard boys. You are hard boys now. Yeah, you got to um, prove yourselves first. Well, I've... So, Shazim has worked with you. Yeah. And so, Al has worked with you. Has Frank... No. Frank, Frank, Frank has is, worked with Al. What, okay. What were you... Were you in that one, Ryan? I was not in no. that one. Wait. That was your game. You yeah. you were in my game. Mm-hmm. And, and Matt and Matt played Al. Yeah. Wait, um, did I? So, I you Josh, played... Josh played Bink. Yep. Yep. And John played the old man. Yep. So yep. you haven't worked. So you haven't worked with the hard boys yet. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I have, yes. but I haven't worked with with with, you, with either of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With Frank or Al. Yeah. Yep. I like how so our fantasy diagram. game, our mm-hmm. fucking fantasy game, has a character named Frank and Al. <laughs> <laughs> high fantasy. <laughs> it's so high fantasy that we went back to normal names. That's right. And yeah. are we back to an all human party again? Um, no, Matt, uh, Matt's I'm a dwarf. Right? Actually, yeah, we probably have forgot. We should still do that. Yeah. Can we go around the table and everyone describe their characters? Sure. Actually, you know what? Why don't we hold on that? Okay. Why don't we, um, we're going to hand wave, um, a bit of your, your, your prep is rushed. Sure. Um, you guys, Hendel leads you right down to the quartermasters. Um, if you need to stop at your personal quarters for anything, you're allowed to do that. But you get the sense that Hendel is is trying to kind of um, usher you along. That he's trying to kind of keep his eyes on you and get everyone what they need and get the hell out. And Matt, specifically because of your insight role, you you get the impression that Nefundi is really leaning on uh, Hendel to get this mission rolling quickly and quietly. So, um, why don't you guys, uh, we'll take a, uh, a musical interlude, <laughs> okay. um, and do, you guys do, think do, of do, 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 what do, do, you would do, do, ask do, do, for, do, 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 knowing do, do. that you're giving, you've been given, um, some priority, um, requisition abilities. So ready room. think about it. If mm-hmm. you want to make little lists, of anything you want, talk about it, whatever you want to do. And uh, we'll, do. we'll equip you, and then we'll uh, cut to the coterie assembling and see what you guys look like as newly equipped. I do stop by my room to grab my warpal sword. Other than that, I leave the rest of my It's not there. <laughs> So, following your trip to Pharaoh's quartermaster provisions, you have assembled um, at the entryway to the Tradesium, the traditional kind of departing point for coteries, um, a large square. And there are these little stone obelisks that are kind of all around in almost uh, 270 degrees outside that indicate to the sinishers, the start of guideways that go all through Regnum. Hendel is there. <clears throat> you see him. Uh, he has a small pack on his back. As I mentioned, he's a he's a halfling um, of about middle age, and uh, he looks comfortable for the road. He has a small pack on his back, 
and then has just a variety of pouches on him, uh, well-worn leather armor, um, a small blade at his at his side, and um, a gauntlet on his wrist, and one of your five medallions hanging on his chest. And he says, um, "All right, I assume we are all ready." Once you got, why don't you guys take this opportunity to describe what your characters look like and then tell me what you have acquired from Pharaoh. Okay, Shazim is a tall, well built human with a dark brown skin. Uh, he is extremely muscular, like a bodybuilder, um, but he carries himself a little awkwardly, almost like he isn't used to his own body in a way. Maybe he suddenly became super strong and isn't used to it. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, he has a graying goatee, even though he's in his late 20s. And um, you think he has a shaved head, but you don't ever see it because he always wears a large turban with a glowing red gem in the middle of it. All right. He is um, wearing chainmail armor um and a, like uh on his under the uh sorry above the chainmail he's wearing like kind of baggy looking pants something that you would would see in you know aladdin <laughs> <laughs> um and and like a, a long chainmail jacket um that he lets kind of stay open in the front so that you can see his Rippling abs, and <laughs> oh. we'll say he's wearing uh, MC Hammer balloon pants. Yeah, exactly. Right. Blue, Sounds, of course. Yep. Yeah. Sounds like a Marvel character. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what have you acquired from Pharaoh? Um, I have acquired. Oh, what the fuck did I say they were called? Something Magic of, binoculars, basically. Something of seeing. Gl- a glass, Owl? glass Owl? of of seeing or something. Um, so basically, what it is is um, hanging on a chain on my neck is uh like a small glass circle. Uh, and if I hold it up to my face, I get a uh, bonus. I get advantage on perception checks and I can see things at great distances with great detail. All right. Ooh. Mm. <clears throat> Ryan. Uh, so Helgus is a uh, tall, uh, doughy, um, built. Uh, he's uh, fair skinned. It's, he's a kid, basically. So he's uh, seventeen. Um, he's the kind of guy who'd be wearing like a t shirt to the pool, probably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's got Almost like, got me. yeah. But he's got like like I, I, like Chris Farley athleticism. You know, he's like <laughs> surprisingly nimble um, for you know a, a, a bigger dude. Um, he's wearing a uh, chainmail armor, and he's um, very eagerly showing off this pouch on his uh, belt that appears to be empty, but he goes around to each of you and asks you to name a spice. And then when you do, he name it, he pulls it out of this pouch and uh, shows you a head. He's like, it, it may look like a pinch, but it, you could season a whole meal with this. Mm. I saw they had it in the mess hall and I wanted one of my own. <laughs> and then after he goes through this whole, like, you know, description of this pouch he's like oh and also i got a shield ah very good <laughs> i think hilgis is really in the wrong line of work <laughs> his dream has always been to be a chef it's not what it's cracked up to be <laughs> <laughs> heward's handy spice pouch <laughs> yep. that is awesome. plus the battering shield oh. uh dan how about frank yeah uh frank is tall he's six two and uh i think i've described him before kind of built like a swimmer so he's on the thinner side but broad shoulders uh he's got kind of a mediterranean complexion and he's um he often wears like kind of a a dark broad brimmed hat and dressed for the road and uh usually kind of got that five o'clock shadow going on and he from the uh what he has recently acquired is a, it looks like a, I guess in D and D terms, it would look more like a elvish court blade. Like almost it's not, not rapier, like uh three musketeers, but more of a thin blade, I guess. It's a deep 3.5 dive. Yeah. There. Right. Um, yeah. and, uh, his sword is a plus one sword and it's got the Ruby of the war mage, which uh, allows me to use, 
my sword as my uh, spell casting focus. Is that a two handed weapon? Nope. Okay. Yep. Cool. <clears throat> All right, Al. Uh, Al is about five foot two. He's got uh, dark, twisted, knotted hair that flows out from underneath a purple velvet hood. Uh, you can kind of see bits of leaves and twigs kind of stuck into some of his dreads. Um, attached to the purple hood is a patchwork of fabrics. All of them have images of stars on them. It kind of looks like they're uh, he put it together himself uh, and st- You notice that it's stitched together with a deep black, almost purple threading that twinkles as the light catches it in uh, in different directions. Uh, He is carrying a, uh, for him, fairly large sickle uh, with a silvery blade that uh, glows like moonlight. And uh, underneath his... His shirt, you can see that he's wearing a uh, a chain chain shirt. All right. So we're all 6'2", and Al's 4'2"? Is that what I'm 5'2". 5'2". <laughs> <two. laughs> five, 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 two. Two. Okay. He's a little guy. <laughs> Three humans and a dwarf. <laughs> yep. Next to come on ABC. <laughs> Handel uh, looks around and says, um, all right, well, we're ready to begin. Um, he looks around. Everyone has their medallion on. Yeah. Yep. He he explains a couple simple invocations um, to use this. So essentially, a uh, bonus action to use your medallion to communicate with each other and or back to um, the tradicium. He says, uh, uh, additionally, um, I am, I've been tasked by Nefundi. I will be staying for the entire mission. Um, I understand, uh, Hilgis, you've, You've led to prior expeditions. Yes, successfully? I have. Yes, we 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 uh we did well. I I did one with Al and one with Shazim, and um we we did um we did good jobs. Oh, excellent. Well, I'll allow you to uh, take tactical command of the situation once we're there. But um, oh, fuck I am, uh, We may have <laughs> uh, altered the fabric of all of time. <clears throat> ah, no bother. Well, another day in the tradition. All right. <clears throat> well, cured yourselves. This can be. Challenging if you're a soft boy. <laughs> and um Damn right. Uh <laughs> Hendel walks forward to one of the um these little stone obelisks and he touches it holding his own medallion and you start walking behind him and suddenly the road in front of you kind of stretches and you start walking and these images of, of of the terrain just start to kind of fan out much like the effect in like a Star Trek movie when they go into hyperspace or light speed or whatever warp warp drive, whatever the fuck they call it. (laughs) Nerds. Nerds. Um, But you do kind of see things as they pass. You get more, more of a glimpse or, or not things that are close are just kind of a blur, but large terrain features in the distance, mountain ranges, things like that kind of pass by. Um, much like a galaxy would if you were traveling um, at those speeds. I hope uh, people write letters to correct you on your warp, <laughs> warp speed analysis. <laughs> and um, you follow on this way for several hours. And um, you there's kind of a sense of, of when you hit a certain point, there's a, a sense of vertigo. Um, those of you that travel before, you know that you're hitting these different guide stones along these guideways and essentially turning. Um, but there is kind of this uncomfortable sensation in your stomach. And after the third of these several hours in, um, you, there's a large mountain range that you see passing by on the right. Again, it's, it's blurred, just sort of a, a blurry silhouette passing by and something you take to be a river on your left side. Suddenly there's this horrendously uncomfortable sensation. Imagine being on a, bungee cord starting from the bottom you are at your max velocity and you get this horrific rending sensation and you just are pulled out and you find yourselves torn and the terrain around you kind of melds into stillness 
but it's not the clarity of the world that you're used to. It's everything is sort of illuminated and just light. The mountains are off to the side. They're just peaks and triangles of, of light and shadow to the left. This river of light just flows by you. And in front of you is a massive creature, polyhedral, almost like a, a, st- a connected set of D eights and six spindles come out from it almost like a giant spider but a three-dimensional one where the legs come out to the sides to the top and to the front and back and it spins and moves towards you everyone roll initiative oh, dear fuck. lord is it, it sounds is it like, like <laughs> spider-like it, it's spider-like but if the spider had no front or it, back or top or bottom. like the video game we're playing didn't fully render yes, yes. okay <laughs> roll the die Wow, with Matt my 20. graphics card, I hit, I know those feels. <laughs> 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 Gonna kill us quick here. Yeah, right. Wow, he's already got three rerolls too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you use them all for initiative? Uh, I, I presume I'm going first. I rolled a nat twenty, so that's a twenty-three for Frank. That's a four for Shazim. Got a ten for Al. Uh, nine for Hugus. So as this um, comes into some clarity around you, again, the description you gave, Jacob, of a, of a partially rendered video game is, is accurate, but there is no color where you are. Um, all of you are recognizable to each other um, as, as a shape. There is more detail to you than there is to this creature. Everything else is just light and shadow, um, but it is all illuminated. The sky above you is just motes of flowing light and energy. The ground below you is less um, kind of vibrant, but again, just light. But it's a clear plane that you're you're stepping on. And this creature kind of rotates as it comes towards you. Imagine this this six legs kind of just moving end over end, top top to bottom, just rotating around in all three axes as it moves towards you. Each leg is an it's an arm, it's a tentacle, it's an arm, and it moves towards you, and it, the first two legs come down and strike towards Hendel. And it beats you down. Outstanding. Good old 23 plus on its initiative. Two of these, um, these limbs, whatever you want to call them, mm-hmm. strike towards in a, in a point, and kind of pin Hendel into this this ground, this plane of light and you see kind of like explosions of light come out of him as as blood or or what we would think of as blood. But but like lights wow, of, of moat kind of mm-hmm. come out from it. Almost like a like a sparkler goes off mm-hmm. as like his his what would be blood is now instead like energy which is kind of flowing out um, into the world. Everybody give me a constitution <clears throat> save. Oh boy. It's kind of D- like we're in like Tron, right? DC 11. Mm. Ooh. 16. 12th. If you succeed, you are unaffected. If you fail, give me a D3. You are sickened for that many rounds Ugh. from the wrenching uh, situation that unfell you. And if you're trying to look up sickened, see conditions. <laughs> <laughs> Frank failed, but he also rolled uh, a one, so he's okay. only down for one round. So I, Di- I'm going to lose this Essentially, round, right? yep. no, no. Disadvantage oh, on oh, okay. basically all your rolls. Okay. It, attack, ability, and saving throws. Cool. Um, <clears throat> he just made it. You see Hendel's shape falls to the ground, these motes of light coming mm. out from him. You hear him scream. The You hear the voice, but it's kind of like crystalline as it passes through. If anyone has Arcana, I do. Um, give me I do a too. roll. I would say Arcanum and Mythos. Give yourselves advantage on this roll. Cool. Dope. The the two people who have Arcana. Yep. That's two sixteen. Oh. So dirty twenty. I rolled an eighteen and a nineteen, so I got a twenty-one. All right, um, Shazim and Al, you are on the astral plane. Cool. Fuck. You know that. <laughs> Uh, Frank. Frank kind of stumbles a few steps as he's coming out of this kind of vertigo shock. And uh, as he kind of stabilizes himself, he almost like this is the first time 
Uh, Frank just became a third level fighter and an Eldritch Knight. So for the first time, he's going to summon his sword to his hand. Uh, and so he's <clears> kind <throat> of like instinctually reaching for it, but he finds it in his hand already. And he will kind of try to take a few steps like quickly towards it and try to slash at one of the tentacles that just hit Hendel. Okay. So that's his first kind of instinct. All right. Give me an attack roll. Disadvantage. Uh, disadvantage, right? Uh, uh, low is 16. Okay. Um, Excuse uh, me, 17. Roll uh, any die and pick evens or odds. <laughs> uh, any die. Okay. Any die, pick what you want. Uh, odds. Five, got it. Okay. Um, you swing, and for a second, it almost seems like the limb disappears, and, but then it comes back, and this light hits, and you see the explosions of, of sparks and motes of light come off it. Roll damage. Nice. I probably fought things in the uh, training yards like people who use Blink. Did that? Seems very similar to that. Got it. Uh, it's nine damage. Nine damage. All right. Um, Al. Does it look like... Does it look like Hendel is dead or is he just badly injured? He does not look dead. He is injured and he is pinned to this ground, the best you would call it. Okay. Uh, Al is going to... I mean, first he's going to sort of look around and realize that he's on the astral plane and give out like a, whoa. Uh, And then (laughs) turn his focus to this creature. uh, And he is going to cast, he's going to hold up his moonsickle and it's going to glow bright and he's going to cast a guiding bolt at this thing. Alright. It's going to be a 20 to hit. Give me a uh, roll. Pick your odds or evens. I'm gonna go with evens. It's a 4. I got it. Alright. Roll damage. That's gonna be 4d6 of radiant damage. Damn. Yeah. Oh, baby. Uh, 12, 17, 21 radiant damage. Holy shit. Uh, and that also means that uh, the next attack roll made against the target before the end of my next turn has advantage. Um, as a bonus action, I am going to use one of my wild shapes. Uh, but because I'm a circle of stars druid, I get called starry form. Uh, Appropriate so, in the astral mm, plane. Uh, right? Uh, bonus action, expend the use of wild shape to take on a starry form rather than transform into a beast. Form sheds bright light in t- uh, 10 foot radius, dim light for an additional mm. 10, and it lasts 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to choose the archer form. So if anybody looks over at Al, you're going to see the threading on his patchwork start to light up and glow. And you're going to see some of the stars on his um, cloak are going to light up uh, along him. And he almost takes on the glowing visage of uh, like a constellation of an archer. And with that, I get to... Uh, uh, uh. God damn, this guy dressed for the party. Right? <laughs> this guy really picked out his outfit. So as bonus action and on subsequent turns as a bonus action, I make a ranged spell attack, hurling a luminous arrow at the creature within 60 feet. Uh, and that's going to have advantage because of the guiding bolt. Oh, that's going to be a 21 to hit. Okay. Give me hmm. that odd or even roll again. I'm going to go with odd this time. Oh, nice. Seven. Got it. And that is uh, 1d8 plus 2 radiant damage. So six radiant damage. Okay. Um, As Al does this, takes this form, shoots this guiding bolt, which is just this bright, piercing light that comes through and strikes this creature in its, the best you would call it, body. This polyhedral kind of center of this thing. Um, Massive explosions of, of these motes of light come off. 
and they they spread through the the air, the space all around you. And you see, you know, you're, you're not really paying attention, but they go up and out, and then some of them kind of start to define and, into tendrils um, that kind of move through the the space around you, all in between you. Um, Hilgus. <clears throat> So Hilgus is going to run at this um, thing, with and he's going to shout, "Morning, Schmiedel!" <laughs> his hammer, um, <laughs> and he's going to uh, going to try to hit it with his hammer, um, but he's going to miss because mm. he rolled a three. Okay, um, you swing and it it moves amazingly quickly. These. It just pivots to the side, and the the limb that you are kind of going towards just ends up up above you, and other limbs kind of touch the ground around you. Uh, Shazim. Uh, Shazim moves towards it as well, and as he does so, he um, smoke kind of fills the air around him, and he pulls a giant curved two-handed sword out of the smoke and, um, and swings the blade at the creature. Um, I'm going to just roll my d6 with it and go with even. All right. Uh, I missed, and I got odd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, again, the thing, this thing kind of just rotates above you, and you end up kind of passing under it. Um, it moves the, the two limbs that are pinning handle down, stay in place, <clears throat> and the rest of it just kind of sp- kind of rotates up and over you, those two limbs staying in place. Okay. I'm kind of below it. I look up at it with my sword kind of in front of me to protect myself and I say, my friends, we are on the astral plane. Um, H- Hendel kind of, uh, you hear him grunt in, in pain on the ground and um, he, he says, cut it, cut it down! Don't, don't stray far! We'll be lost! And um, he tries to cast a spell. And that one fails his concentration, I'll say. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and you, you see crackling light kind of spread off him and then kind of hit the ground, and you see just motes of light spread through the surface below you guys as he remains pinned under this thing. The creature, now these these two limbs um, that are pinning Hendel down um, kind of arch out to the side, and this main body of it lowers down right onto Hendel. And... Oh, fuck three of these limbs spin out towards you. Um, I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Uh, Shazim, Hilgis, Frank, and Al. Got Shazim, Hilgis, and Al. Shazim, 10. Hilgis, 15. Al, 23. Ooh. Nope, misses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that missed you, Hilgis? Yeah. Okay. You should convince Josh to use one of his rerolls. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Um, Matt, one of these things kind of, these just points of this end of this limb kind of cut across your chest, and you feel, as this light kind of explodes from you, you just feel weakness kind of pull from you. It's uh, 12 points of necrotic damage. Oh, God. Uh, and the bulk of this thing settles onto Hendel, and you lose sight of his form and it almost seems like these things uh, almost start to conjoin. Mm. And you, the, the, the shrill kind of metallic voice of Hendel calling out becomes muffled. And everyone give me a perception check. Oh, I don't like this. 14? 15. I rolled a 13, so 12. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Three. Uh, if you ha- actually, if, if you um, are trained in Arcana, I'll give you give you advantage on that perception roll. Thirteen. Uh, that, my second roll was lower, so fourteen still. All right, fourteen. What was yours, Matt? Thirteen. Thirteen. Fifteen for. Fifteen. Yep. Um, for the anyone that rolled kind of above twelve, it seems like these tendrils of light from from these motes that exploded off the creature, they're settling. These motes are settling into these tendrils that seem to be connecting, like reaching out to you Mm -hmm. and touching each of you and leading back to this creature. Uh, Frank, your action. Don't like it. You are no longer sick. 
Okay. Uh, I will... I'm going to do two things. One, I am going to try to slash at one of these limbs that's kind of flailing around. And the second one, I'm going to use a, my bonus action uh, with my feet telekinetic. And I'm going to try to shove this creature off of uh, Hendel. I don't think it's going to work because it's big and crazy. And, okay. But I'm going to try. So uh, for the attack, uh, I will roll... I rolled a 20, well, to hit uh, dirty 20 and odds or evens. That's it. Odds, 10, miss. Um, and so the uh, to shove it, the creature within 30 feet of me, it must succeed on a strength saving throw. DC 8 plus my proficiency, which is plus 210, plus my ability modifier, 12. So not very hard. Okay. Okay. Um. You strike out, and you're sure, like, it, it does not dodge you, mm -hmm. and yet somehow you find yourself, the blade passes through, and it's just still there. Sure. And again, it brings you back to that training ground. Yep. You direct this wall of energy towards it, and you feel it reverberate back to you, um, and almost drive you to the to the floor. Dope. Um, Al. Ooh. Uh, so Al is reeling a bit from that. Uh, hit that he took from this thing. Um, he is going to, as a bonus action, light off another one of these um, s celestial arrows from his form, from his starry form. It's going to be a 19 to hit. All right, that's a hit, but give me that auto even roll. Wouldn't it be epic if Josh just party wiped us the <laughs> opening, <laughs> oh, opening be odd. 20 minutes? Got it. It's a CR-15 creature, so you guys are <laughs> uh, That is nine radiant damage. Okay. And you said these, like, motes of light that are touching us, do they have, like, a physical form, or are they more ethereal? <laughs> it's hard to gauge it in this environment this is probably I, I think your first time like being aware of being in the astral plane oh yeah um, so it's hard to tell what's physical and what's not but it definitely doesn't seem solid I can say that much okay he is if I if I move do they follow with me or do they kind of like is it like a string that's attached to me uh, yes and give me another perception roll with advantage as you as you move. Um, dirty 20. Okay. No, sorry. 18. Okay, they, they do follow you, and you you kind of spin, and uh, you, you feel it kind of reach out to you, and you can feel that there is, there is something... It's not physical. It's definitely... It's definitely a energy of some sort that is connecting part of you to this thing and to each other now. Okay. Uh, as he moves in and sees that, he's. I'm going to use Guiding Bolt on this thing again. Okay. Uh, so that is a... Ooh, that's only a 10 to hit. Okay. Um, it spins past it. Helgus? Okay, we're going to try another attack. Um, we're gonna we're gonna miss again, um, but uh, if I'm within five feet of it, I can attempt to shove it with my shield. Okay. Um, so that is going to be um, strength. It's gonna be a, an opposed roll, so strength athletics against either. Oh, actually, um, how much bigger than us is this guy? It is huge. Oh, yeah, so that's not gonna work. Oh. Um, but I'll the try. size category yeah. huge. Yeah. Size or category. Are you describing it? Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck! Um, oh boy! So yeah. scratch that. So it can't be any more than one size category bigger. So, but I'm gonna try it anyway because mm -hmm. I'm dumb. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Um, um, so it's a. Uh, we'll yeah. just do a roll. I'll yeah. give you a uh, disadvantage. disadvantage. If it rolls a one, yeah. damn it! It did not roll one. Uh, I rolled a one though. Oh nice. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> um. Again, you, you feel not just does it not work, um, you hammer your shield into it. You feel not just its physical strength, but energy like pulse back into you and kind of drive you down like almost to a knee for a moment. This is very no good. Very no good. Shazim. 
Uh, can I stand over Hendel? You can try to... It, the it's, bulk of this creature mm-hmm. has kind of settled down, so I probably, again, describing as huge, didn't accurately portray the... The center mass of this thing mm-hmm. is probably about 10 feet long. Um, again, I use like D8s, but mm-hmm. like essentially you could almost picture it as like a couple lo- giant D8s connected in the center, 10 to 12 feet long total, six to four feet wide. And then each of these limb things that come off it are 15 feet long. Guys, mm. it's so an astral space dragon. <laughs> from, yeah. yep. from one end to the other, probably 50 feet. Yeah, oh Un- unrendered Lord. daddy long leg. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, but you can. Get, I mean, you can get to the the center mass of this thing, which is descended onto him. It's descended onto him, like it's crushing him. You cannot or clearly see him. the oh, lines okay. between. Cannot clearly see like him. It's got okay. A jaw like on All its right. bottom. In that case, um, I'm just gonna try to get it off of him. I think um, I'm gonna try to. He- I'm gonna hex this thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to give it disadvantage on constitution. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to charge in and uh, swing at it. All right. Even. Even. 12 to hit. 12 will not do it. Oh! <laughs> um, uh, in this case, your your blade kind of just deflects off with, with mm. you know, kind of no... no Effect. It almost just feels like it, it redirects in your hand um, as it moves towards this thing. Almost if it's more energy pushing it away mm-hmm. than like a physical like deflection. Okay, I say I'm not sure that we can harm it. Um, I'm not sure we have a choice. All right, uh, you hear the muffled sound of uh, of Hendel, and um, it, he he says in a very muted way call call back and um, you see a explosion of light in the center of this thing and they, this there's motes of light kind of hit up reflecting off the bottom of this thing and for a moment you see separation between Hendel and this creature as it kind of rears a, a, off, off him for a moment and then descends back towards him for a moment you can see him clutch, clenching the medallion on his chest and then this thing descends back. These motes of light shatter off in all directions and, and then start to settle back and reinforce on these tendrils. Frank. I grab the medallion around my neck. Okay. And I say one of the um, the command words. And I say, Nafundi, we're in the astral plane. We're trapped. Okay. You call out and your world is torn apart. The light disappears, and you just, each of you, feels just vertigo, spinning, wrenching. You feel your your stomach going up, down in each direction. The, The light disappears. Darkness comes in. You see flashes of flame, light, darkness, and all of a sudden, everything goes still. You see something swarming up towards you, and you hit a solid object, and each of you... Um, takes five points of damage. I'm and, dead. And you <laughs> physically come to rest on a solid object. Oh, handle. I hold my kind of grasp at my head uh, and kind of open my eyes slowly and look around. You all look around you and it's dark, not pitch black, almost the inverse of what you just saw shapes are distinct. And suddenly as you, you start to clear your head, you start to kind of push yourself up on the ground. Things are much more in a way familiar. There's a ground. You rise yourself up off the ground. Your, your eyes pass around you and the, the shapes in the distance, you start to look familiar To one side, you see a mountain range coming up, but above you is just darkness with almost, almost a black light effect. Everything around you has this sort of ultraviolet sheen to it. The stars, instead of distinct spots, are kind of swirling, pulsing lights of ultraviolet 
that reflect off this mountain range to the side, this inky black river to your side, this dark kind of smoky substance curls around your legs all over the ground. Um, everyone give me an arcana check. There, an again? Or? Um, just straight arcana. I see. Are we still in this astral plane? We are not. Uh, 14. 12. Uh, 5. 22. There, there is a, a coolness that kind of goes beyond temperature. It's almost a numbness. It almost feels more like when you, your parts of your body start to go to sleep and you're kind of trying to shake them uh, awake. Matt, you think you know where you are. You think you are in the shadow fell. As you look around at each other, you're much more distinct and recognizable. You're essentially, you look exactly like you would just this different kind of light reflecting off you. Each of you notices on each other, the, this kind of purpley green ultraviolet light is kind of the only source of, of, anything you're visualizing around you. The only thing that is distinct from it is at each of you, you see this blue crackling energy on your medallions and you see the wisps of these tendrils that are extending off them towards the space that this creature used to to hold. The creature is gone completely and these tendrils, these, these kind of flickering blue tendrils disappear but the crackles remain in the medallions for a moment. They start to kind of fade a bit, but still sort of pulse softly. And it is dead silent. Did someone use the medallion? Yeah, I did. Hmm. That's what Hendel wanted. Is Hendel here? Hendel and the creature are gone. Al, is this the abyss? Uh, not quite. I think we're in Shadowfell. What does this mean? Mm. Well, that's <sighs> a good question. The Nether Realm. You know, many ways the opposite of the astral plane. Both, um, I will say, both Al and Shazim have a basic understanding of what Shadowfell is, and essentially, it is, um. It's actually pretty common uh, or pretty similar to the upside down in Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. It is a exact reflection of the material plane, but a darker version of it. So that mountain range that you see off to the side, that river to the other side, are probably real places in the material plane that you're traveling to. So you are there and yet not there. So Frank looks around kind of straightening. We're on another plane. Uh, yes, but not yes and no. It's kind of like we're on the underside of it. So we went from Regnum to the astral plane, and then from the astral plane, we're now in this shadow one. Uh, Hilgus tries to do a handstand. <laughs> um, give me a flex <laughs> roll. 17. You... Do a excellent handstand. Right. Our fearless leader is doing a handstand. F- physically, it it feels the same. You <laughs> interact I, with the environment. Gravity feels the same. Um, if the, I do this long enough, maybe I go through. Uh, as your hands kind of stand on the ground, you notice this this smoky kind of fog on the ground, kind of parts around your hands, and then starts to sort of fall back in as as you move. Maybe we should dig. <laughs> to be here is not. As terrible as to be in the abyss or plains of fire or some other such place, this place is much closer to our own. Imagine that our world is a sheet of paper, the astral plane, the sheet above, and this, the back of that paper. Yeah, I think I follow, but how do we plan on getting back? Now look at Al. Do you think we can... Use the medallion. I don't think we can. If Hendel was still here, yeah. I mean, 
Frank, did you, did you get a response after you used the coin, or it just it jumped seemed, in us here? It seemed that the instant I used it is the instant that we got punted off to this place. Hmm. Do you think it was, oh, uh, what's his name, the guy you contacted? Nefundi. See, do you think it was Nefundi's doing? Trying to pull us back? Or was it faster than that? I think it was faster. Hmm. Hendel said it would might take a moment to get to him. So if the effect was instantaneous, it was not Nefundi's doing, but an effect of using the medallion on the astral plane. Do you think that when you call it... Jake, give me an investigation roll. It's meant to go to one place, and because we were in another, it brought us somewhere else? Nine. I shrug. If we keep trying, maybe we'll go to the right place. No, do not. Do not try to use the medallion. What sort of thing? Handle's not here, right? Handle is not here. Frank looks like we've been like talking to one another. Then he kind of stops and kind of reverts back into like, um, like his role as a warden to protect his coterie. And he starts looking out in the kind of area surrounding them. And he says, as he starts to slowly walk in a circle around the group, what sort of things exist in the shadow realms? I look to Al. Al looks to the DM. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The Shadowfell is a terrible place. (laughs) Well, super is a dark place with many dark creatures that inhabit it. It is (laughs) not PCs ever return. (laughs) It is not necessarily a pure place of evil, but evil finds a home there. Um, Darkness is at home there. There are many different sort of, you can think of them as neighborhoods of Shadowfell, places that connect to it, dark legends, places of horror have doorways into Shadowfell that connect all these places. Creatures that call Shadowfell home are creatures that, no matter what, are at home in darkness. Well, I Literal don't, and figurative. I don't really know too much, mostly, you know... Reading things in the library, legends, it's all kind of vague, but, you know, shit ain't good, boys. You know, I'm I'm going to be real here. I'm going to try to be a hard boy, but this is, (laughs) it's Hmm. not a great situation. Uh, Al and Shazim, you don't understand what brought you here, but you think back to this insane chaotic battle with this creature these motes of light which became these tendrils that connected you they came off the creature and it seems that they connected the coins the medallions i um i say well josh question the amount of time that we were traveling um were we almost at our destination yes okay you think I say, um, Handel had mentioned that these medallions were recently created. He said that the magic was almost an experiment. We spoke about it a little during our trip, but I believe that they have not been tested in the field. I do not think that the senators had attempted to use them while traveling in this way. And I think that whatever is happening here in the place we went, were meant to go, it has interacted strangely with the medallions. So great. And a I, malfunction. You all saw the cord of light that came from the medallion. They all were connected to that thing, connected to that place we just left. It is possible that that creature was in fact created by these, if not powered or drawn. I think it is very dangerous for us to attempt to use them again. The next time we do, we may find ourselves in the abyss. Dan, Frank is looking out as Mm -hmm. Shazim is talking. 
you know, you mm-hmm. described taking up sort of this defensive stance and it's, you know, it, it, this is not a comfortable, similar terrain for you. He has a it's, moment where he wants, because it's dark, he's, he's kind of got the, the arcane words for light on his lips and then thinks about what a tiny beacon of light would do (laughs) in a place entirely of shadow. And he keeps it to himself and he just keeps kind of straining his eyes. It's a place of shadow. And yet there is illumination. Sure. There is this, uh, again, best way I can kind of visualize is is this black light kind Mm -hmm. of effect. And because of that, there are things that sort of appear and disappear and reflections and glimmers. And you start to become aware of, you know, these, these, these reflections that kind of come and go, whether it's on these tree like silhouettes or this river like body that's flowing, you find them distinct from several sets of things. And suddenly you realize instead of just random points of light, they look like eyes, (laughs) a half a dozen sets of eyes. And they seem to slowly be moving closer. I say, um, as I I kind of, slow my movement. So I'm, I'm kind of being more conscientious of keeping squaring off my body to the way that some of them are approaching them. And I say, all right, lads look alive. It seems as though we are not alone. As you talk, these sets of eyes come closer and you start to see silhouettes they're small creatures, maybe four, five feet. Hard to tell because they're very bent and they're very slim, pointy, almost goblinoid in appearance, but more almost a cross between a goblinoid and a, a fey creature. Very kind of pointy. These everything is angular, tall ears, angular, chiseled faces. Josh, as uh, one of my three known spells for first level, I took Comprehend Languages. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so did I. And uh, mm. I'm going to start um, kind of muttering the words to it low and uh, let the spell go off so that maybe if they communicate with one another or they reach out to us, I'll kind of have it prepared. Okay. They start to get closer. They're kind of forming around you. Um, hey. Uh, what? Stay back. E- easy. Easy. We uh, come in peace. I think. Almost. We just showed up. A semicircle. And you hear um, one of them say to another in uh, deep speech. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. Uh, Dan, oh, my gosh. Wanna... I fucking have deep speech. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Al. And uh, Frank, you understand this. And um, you hear one say to another, they've come through. They've come through. They're not her. They're not her. Who is her? And we came through, yes. I'll repeat it back in in deep speech. Who are you talking to? I say to our group, uh, I say, "What is?" it seems like we aren't the ones or person they're looking for. Let them know that. Al is, he, he seems to speak the tongue. You do as well. Uh, I can it. Hmm. Um, when you say that, they kind of like sort of jolt back for a moment as you speak, Al, and then hold. And one of them takes a couple steps forward. He has a wicked looking barb spear in his hands that he has pointed towards you, but still probably 30 feet away or so. And he says... I have you come here. You will draw it. You should not travel this way. Uh, it was an accident. And by it, do you mean like huge creature, long spindly arms, smoky modes of light stuff? Yes, the edge walker. This is the weak space. Yeah, we, this is where she hunts. We we just we just fought that thing. And then we somehow got shunted here with uh, kind of a thing that we have. It, 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 the creature kind of looks towards you and you, you see his eyes shift down and you say, 
it, it says to each other, they, they have, they have items. They, they will draw her. You must leave this place. Now you must leave. What? I'll ask him about the edge Walker. What, what is she? What, what is, what is she? And how can we not draw her here? What items? Can we turn them off? Can you yeah. help us? Please. You, we will not help you. You are, you are bring danger here. You are not of this place. You are foolish. You travel through the weak space that draws her. This place, this is a place of crossover. You are foolish. Do people not learn? Hmm. Are we not the first? I'm repeating. So I'm letting Al kind of have this conversation like in the foreground. And I am kind of uh, in the background with um, uh, Shazim and uh, Hilgis. And I'm kind of repeating what they're saying so that you guys kind of clue in on all of this. We are the guardians. We do not let others come through this place because they draw her. They draw it. Is it magic that draws her or just people, life? Have there you, been others that have come? You, you travel. You travel with the arcane. And you travel through the point that touches all other points. That is where she hunts. Through the edges of many places. This is a rift. And I think if you are foolish enough to come here, it probably came from your place in the first time. Long ago. Well, just to be clear, this was an accident. We had no intention of this, and this is somebody else's fault. I'd just like to make, make that clear. I'm just a sucker of happenstance. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Ask, him, Al. Ask him how we get home. Uh, do you know how we can uh, go back to our place, maybe without, you know, running into her again? One of the other ones says, Z. We must dispatch them. They are bonded to her. Did they have that light. Frank, did he tell them that we are the hard boys? Because they will probably have heard of us. <laughs> we are very famous. Do you have anything to offer? A, a pack of spouches? <laughs> spices? <laughs> um, have, have you heard of cinnamon? It's fucking amazing. <laughs> you can take a challenge. Okay. Josh, I, I reach over and like, I imagine this medallion is kind of like on a large kind of like long kind of leather kind of necklace and I reach and take it off my head. They, they grab their weapons. They stop! Stop! Al. We will fail you. Do not this, leave that here. Tell them that we will leave. We have only one more question. How do we anchor the thing so that we may kill it? Ah, uh, sure. Uh, so is there a is there a way to Defeat her? Can it? This walker? She walks. She walks where she wants to go. You must find your own way to, to pin her, to break the bond. But you will not do it here. She has drawn you, these things, Al, yes? I, I point to my necklace. You look around, yeah. you see more sets of eyes. A dozen. A dozen and a half now fully in a set, full circle around you. Al? We must go. Ask them where they want us to leave to. Okay, look, we'll leave. We'll take our stuff with us. Just point us in the direction to go, and we will go. The only direction is there. Take that out. It has it in it. Is he pointing into medallion? Yes. My friends, this beast will hunt us across the plains. We must find a suitable place where we may, bat- we, where we may battle it. But I think these lads want us to use the medallion. I think we need to use the medallion and move on. We cannot lose our strength fighting these monsters and then hope to beat this creature. I think that's pretty judgmental to call them monsters. I mean, we just fucking met them. Calm calm down there, bud. But fine. We can gather our shit and let's get out of here then. I'm going to use the medallion to try to contact... Okay. Um, Shazim, you reach down, you grab a hold of the medallion, and as you start to utter the word, this blue crackling energy, you see the tendrils lance out like lightning bolts to the all four of you, almost like chain lightning connecting all four of you, and a sudden ripping sensation 
Roll a D10. Mm. Oh, boy. Mm. Oh, fuck. Are we going to a random blade? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Everyone? Awesome. One person. What? Dan, Dan already did it. I rolled a 10. Oh, wait, did you want me to do it? Or Doesn't matter. Uh, let yeah, Jake do it. For it. He, uh, Shazim <laughs> calls on the power. I think I'm probably drawn By to a power specific of plane, <laughs> to be fair. Please do not send us a plane of fire. I rolled a 10 as well. No kidding. It's meant to be. Meant to Roll be. Roll a 10. Um, you <laughs> feel a similar ripping sensation, and you are pulled out of this place. This feelings of vertigo swirl around you, and all is gone. And we're dead. And we'll come back and find out where oh, you are. Hey, um, where did we go? Oh, fuck. Thank you guys so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed another installment of our Choose Your Own Adventure series. Our intro music is by Wilhelm Screen. Our outro music is by Antti Martikainen. Scores are by Antti Martikainen and Adrian Von Ziegler. Find links to check out all of them, as well as links to all of our social media, bonus episodes, and a lot more stuff at our website, nastygramrpg.com. See you next Tuesday. Mmm, that's nasty. Should I roll for my hit points now? Yeah, I rolled cool. mine. Heroes roll for hit points. That's right. <laughs> is that is that how it works? Mm-hmm. What do you have, D8 for Warlock? I have a D8 plus one. Here we go. And a D10 plus one. No, right? I did. No. Oh, you did. All right, ready? <laughs> two. Uh, two. A two. two. They're still on the record books. <laughs> Where like five players rolled you did one. Better than me. Oh, oh, you did Ryan better got than a one. Me. Ryan got a one. Yeah. One, yeah. two, four. Maybe so, scratch a couple goblins off that encounter. It's, it's okay. <laughs> now, what Matt was? Uh, I'm just Al a meat shield third over here. So yes. Oh, okay. Seems well. Pretty no, I had to level him up soft. to third level. Got what it. if we <laughs> get a re-roll and then you get a re-roll? <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> Wait, which re- anyone that wants to. <laughs> Reroll the hit points can do it right now, mm-hmm. and I get a reroll of my Fuck. choice during uh, the episode. You get like we're gonna give you three yeah. rerolls. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Fuck yeah! You gotta roll the dice, but you're yeah. taking this one no Even matter if what. It's worse. No Even better. if I roll a one, I, I could not roll worse. All right. So all right, here we go. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a four as well. Oh, God damn it! I went down one. I went up three. Sick warrior with 23 <laughs> hit points. <laughs> let me, all right, let tw- me make up to three 27 now. big oh check boy. boxes. DM I'm nasty gonna, I'm, I'm gonna point out, I, was, I was playing my character there, who again has a eight intelligence and an eight wisdom. <laughs> I, I also want to, you know, I'm a little afraid because Josh was talking about how our games aren't deadly enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming, into, uh, coming into a one shot where he's got a few... Uh, Extra bullets in the chamber. I'm a campaign DM. I'm a starter. And here I am coming out, coming out of the bullpen. And all I got to do is throw heat for one inning. <laughs> I don't is have this, to last. You've, you've played in one shots. You haven't. Uh, I, yeah, this yeah. is popping my chair. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Everybody good? Great, grand. Good, good, good. Okay. See if I remember any of the shit we have in these games.